In the darkness, a king makes a fatal error. He hasn't attacked a helpless victim. He has struck a living, breathing fortress of spears. And the battle has only just begun. On one side stands the African lion, an apex predator honed by millions of years of evolution. 400 pounds of fast twitch muscle and a bite force capable of snapping a wild beast's spine. But sheer power means nothing if you cannot reach your target without destroying yourself. The crested porcupine is nature's ultimate defensive engineer. It is armored with over 30,000 keratin spears, evolved from modified hair into lethal spikes. The long, hollow quills on its back act as a warning system, rattling to signal danger. Beneath them lie the shorter, thicker spines. Rid the tips are covered in backward-facing scales that act like jagged fish hooks in soft flesh. Once embedded, they do not slide out. They ratchet deeper with every single muscle contraction. Yet, the lion's desperation overrides his instinct. He is about to learn that this rodent does not just hide, it actively fights back. The arena is set, and the geometry of war takes shape. He is hunting for the rodent's only vulnerability, the soft, unprotected skin of the belly and face. The offensive momentum of the hunt is shattered. This is not a retreat, it is a calculated realignment. As the lion circles, the porcupine stomps its feet, creating a rhythmic, vibrating warning through the ground. Every time the lion steps, the shield rotates, denying him the angle he desperately needs. But this warrior holds its ground, rattling its tail quills like a diamondback rattlesnake. Contrary to popular myth, porcupines cannot shoot their quills like arrows. Is a weapon. Desperation pushes the king to make a fatal miscalculation. Porcupine senses the pressure change and surges backward. The lion roars, not in anger, but in sudden, blinding shock, thrashing his head to dislodge the attackers. But the whoop only drives the barbed tips deeper into the sensitive cartilage of the muzzle. The more he shakes, the more the microscopic scales ratchet forward, anchoring the pain. The porcupine does not pursue. It simply resets the line, ready to deliver another volley. 
We watch the muscles in the lion's shoulders sag as the adrenaline dump fades into throbbing agony. But the biological price is too high. Survival now dictates an immediate retreat. In the unforgiving calculus of the wild, an injury that impairs hunting is a death sentence. The porcupine's defense relies on this exact psychological trigger, weaponizing the predator's fear of disability. The true genius lies in the microscopic design of the weaponry. Without surgical intervention, the quills work their way inward, carrying bacteria deep into the muscle. A single quill festering in the jaw can lead to lockjaw or starvation, killing a king weeks after the battle ends. The porcupine proves that you do not need to be the biggest animal in the savanna to dominate. But there is another warrior, pound for pound the toughest on earth that chooses a darker path. It attacks lions, wrestles pythons, and shrugs off the venom of the deadliest cobras. If the porcupine is the shield, the honey badger is the sword. The porcupine's quills are a brilliant defense against flesh. But next time, we explore what happens when a hunter 